Hello, I am James Swanick, and today we're talking about toxins and toxicity to the body. And today on the show, we've got Diane Kayser, who is a certified functional diagnostic nutrition practitioner uh, outside of uh, or inside Arizona, I should say. She's a vinyasa and yoga teacher, a Reiki practitioner, personal trainer, nutritionist. And uh, Diane specializes in hormones and detoxification. And she reversed her autoimmune disease and her skin issues and her hormone imbalances simply through cleansing, belly balance, superfoods, and a whole lot of self-love. And Diane and I uh, actually know each other. And we were in a self-development program a couple of years ago, and we got to hang out and um, have some fun together. Diane, it's great to have you here. How are you doing? <laughs> Good to be here. Thanks, James. I love our talks. <laughs> yeah, me too. Um, I want to make sure that we talk about the root cause of illness, fatigue, hormonal imbalances, and what we can do about it. But just tell our listeners a little bit about you and how you got into this work. For sure. I think just like uh, anybody else really like, like you, you know, and leading so many people to sobriety is we start to experience our uh, finite of, of life. Like we start to realize, oh, I'm not so invincible anymore. <laughs> and so I went through a, a lot of suffering. I uh, was probably about the age of 30. I moved to Orange County from Sacramento, California. And if you know California, you know there's a lot of pressure to, to fit in, yet stand out at the same time and achieve and perform and um, work your, and am I allowed to say ASS, work your yes, ass off, yeah. work your ass off. <laughs> um, and so we just get in this, this loop of busyness and constantly packing things into time that doesn't even exist. And so I was, I've always been a business owner. I've always been, um, you know, for the first 10 years of my life, I was it, as my twenties, I was a pro soccer player. Then I was a financial planner. I owned a financial planning company, sold that. And then I started, you know, personal training and yoga teaching. And then I was like, well, this is not it. There's more to it than this because I was feeling sick myself at all kinds of hormonal issues. I was exhausted. Um, when I became a bodybuilder, I was 30 years old and that was around the time that I was told I needed breast implants in order to make it in the bodybuilding industry. So I did that. And then progressively, I got really sick. I had belly bloat that would never quit. Um, I had a lot of you know, skin issues. I started to get so puffy, like my face just felt so puffy that I thought, well, that's a thyroid symptom based on Dr. Google, right? But then my doctors were saying, oh, your thyroid levels look normal. And so I just got so frustrated because they said, well, the next best thing um, is to take medication for the rest of my life. You know, I was suffering urinary tract infections. They said, take an antibiotic for the rest of your life. I had, you know, hormonal issues, take birth control for the rest of your life. And I'm like, this sounds so permanent. But yet the things that I did take based on the recommendations were things that made me sicker and sicker to the point where I just lost myself. And I've always been an entrepreneur, but eventually no amount of profits, no amount of performance, no amount of plastic surgery can make me happy. So I got real sick with toxic beauty and Botox and trying to fit in and stand out on the bikini stage. And I, I thought, who the hell am I? Who am I? Lost myself. So I had to go find myself. Yeah. Thank you for sharing your story there. Um, did you feel an internal pressure to have to look a certain way? Like, like do you think that you getting the breast implants and trying to look a certain way was your own self was your own a lack of self confidence or was it just a complete and utter social dictatorship that said you must look this way or was it a little bit of both a little bit of both yeah because i believe really it's it starts as a kid you know either we get a seed planted or a weed planted in our mind of who we're supposed to be. And that starts with parenting. And if you don't have parents, then it starts with, you know, your, your teachers, it starts with, with school and, and peers. And I actually have, I, I, I call it the 10 P model where we are taught as a young child to pedestalize different people, like preachers. We we're taught to pedestalize that religion has it all figured out. You know, religions, nothing in religion's wrong or, or politics, our political leaders, they, we can only look, you know, we have to look up to them and because we're too stupid to know the difference. They've got parents and we've got peers and we have, obviously there's a huge one, which is the press. And then we also have pop culture. So in beauty and for men or women, it's pop culture. And then also in politics, men are taught that their power is to make a lot of money. So 
we're taught different things at a young age. We're taught to pedestalize these things for, you know, knowing better than we do about who we truly are. So we sell our soul at a really young age, which is so unfortunate. And we cut ourselves open and we, we bend and, and tweak and, and power through so that we could become what the outside world thinks that we want to be. And that's, that's all easy to say, you know, we could all say, Oh yeah, what the outside world wants you to be. But the harder part is to challenge our subconscious mind, which is always acting in the background with this bully, this, this ego that says, no, you gotta, you gotta do these things. Like you get a drink to fit in. That's one thing you talk about all the time. Right. Or like, you know, for women, 10% of women feel the pressure to conform by getting, you know, fake boobs, by getting their boobs done. And so that's what we think that we need to do to get attention and to get love and, and to get our fundamental hierarchy needs met, right? There's, we have hierarchy of fundamental needs, and then we have our own individual needs based on what we, you know, what was normal for us in childhood and our upbringing. So for me, it was, my mom wasn't really a good example of like what a feminine woman would be. She was kind of like a hard ass. And so I became a real analytical driven professional soccer player. And so I didn't really know what it was to be a woman. So I I discovered that of what it wasn't to be a woman. So I got to learn. And I think that many of us for when we walk through this life is like, well, it's not about becoming who we think we need to be. It's about unbecoming all of the aspects of ourselves who we have masked, metaphorically speaking. Um, We've put all these masks on. So it's like, no, I'm going to take this mask on. I take this mask off and throw this mask away. I'm going to be who I came here to be, which is really deep in there. And maybe at the age of four or five was the last time you really felt like who you really were supposed to be. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I can relate to, um, you know, pressure or wanting to feel better. I used to put stuff in my hair to create the illusion that I had more hair and my hair was thicker than it actually was. And I, you know, felt trapped in that prison for, for a number of years. And the the reason was because my father was bald and, um, I saw him being particularly not a, I wouldn't say a weak man, but like, not a particularly strong man. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of that had to play out was the dynamics between my mother and, and my father. But anyway, I created this story in my head that bald men had uh, lacked strength. And so that was why I became somewhat obsessed with, you know, creating the illusion that I had more and thicker hair than I actually did. And it wasn't until I did some, you know, extensive self-development work in, inside and let go of that, that I was able to finally just like shave it off. And, and, uh, you know, it felt awkward for a couple of months, but after that, I was just like, Oh, this is so much better. I'm loving it. And now I wake up and I go, yeah, that's the way nature intended me to look. And I think yeah. I look pretty, pretty good and it's good, but it's, it's amazing. Isn't it? Like how many of us create stories in our head yes. that we need to conform and we need to do it this way. And the pressure is so great. So I mean, big. I get it. I get why we do the. I get why we do it because I. I mean, I fell prey to it myself, and thank you for sharing that you did also. And yeah. if you're listening, you know, maybe just ask yourself the question: Where are you falling prey to societal pressure, to family pressure, to spousal pressure, to uh, you know, to all these expectations? And I'll tell you, this COVID nineteen thing, it's really um, highlighted uh, for me how much I should question and how much I'll continue to question just what we're spoon fed by our um, leaders, I guess, you know, politicians and government leaders and, and even health experts, quite frankly, like don't trust me. Don't trust you, Diane, like do your own research, right? Like just because Diane and I are having a conversation here and we we're about to share certain things, you know, based on our experience, don't believe anything we say. Yes, please. (laughs) Please do not pedestalize us. (laughs) That's the person. Pedestalize me. I'm pretty cool. I'm just joking. Well, no. Then if you no, go to no. my podcast, you can pedestalize me. <laughs> um, <laughs> Actually, right, let's though, get into- but James, I think we we should. You know, it, this could be inspirational in a, ped- in a in a fun way to pedestalize us because I took my boobs out, you shaved your hair off, and for a few months we were awkward. But that's how we found the real self and and, and got rid of the layers of non self of, of conforming with, and also first detox the stories because my stories for me were like. Stephen Canellas, when I was 16 years old, you know, grabbed my boobs and said, Hey, your, your boobs are uneven. One's bigger than the other. And then that's planted the weed. Then I had another one that said, Oh, your butt's flat. You, you know, you probably should do something about that. Another one pinched my waistline and I was like 15% body fat. Then I was like, well, I need to be more uh, anorexic to actually get men to notice me. So it's all these stories. It's, it's, and, and until we challenge them, we continue to, you know, run toward the spending a lot of money on masks. So yeah, you know, 
Yeah. I think you should, des- you deserve to be on a pedestal a little bit for that. Yeah. It's inspiring. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, well, you too. Thank you. So this is good. I mean, first of all, we've, we've, we've started this, this podcast episode talking about detoxifying the body and we've started, uh, albeit not, not knowingly um, started with detoxifying the stories, right? The stories yes. that, um, the stories that we create in our own minds. So what a beautiful start and what a great segue into now um, my question, which is what are, what are a lot of the most common toxins that we're putting into our body? How mm-hmm. are we doing that and how do we get them out? Yes. Do you have about 10 days to go over all of this? James? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So there is, let's talk about the t- I'll talk about the top three because there are hundreds of thousands, of course, that have been uh, created since 1930s, the Industrial Revolution. The average person, according to the EPA, has over 700 in their body unknowingly. And the average baby today is born with over 250 from the second that they're born with their first breath. So we have a problem here. So this is not just something that you, know, you accumulate um, you know, because you, you're smoke. It's not just something that you get because you eat soda and, or drink soda and go to Taco Bell every day. Um, you know, I hear a lot of people. And so just like James said about the stories that we carry in our mind, when I ask people, you know, what their lifestyle is like, they're like, I, you know, I'm really healthy. I don't eat Taco Bell. I don't drink soda. I don't smoke. You know, I, I only drink a little bit, you know, a couple times a week. You know, I, I, I eat vegetables. I'm like, how often they're like, you know, once a week. And so the story is that make excuses that it's not that bad. Right. So You could literally eat the healthiest diet in the world and still be loaded with toxins. So it's not just about what you eat. It's, it's also, you know, a step further. So I say that, you know, detox is a new fitness. So I just first wanted to preface it by saying that everybody that, you know, but just because you eat somewhat healthy, you can't just check that off as you're not not toxic because the number one place that you're exposed to toxins, first of all, are in your own house. So 95%, they say, um, of the toxins that you're exposed to are in your own home. And so what do you mean by that? So I would say, you know, first and foremost, are you using anything artificial? So artificial could be, first of all, detox artificial people. That's first, first and foremost, detox artificial people out of your life that, that are fake and that need to wear masks where you, do, you don't feel like you could be yourself around. You know, that's a big one. Um, so that's one big toxin. The second one is Glade plugins. And, you know, the sprays that people are spraying all around their house to make things artificially smell good, um, things that you use, detergents, things that are, that make you smell better in whatever way that is, they're loaded with what's called phthalates and oftentimes parabens. So phthalates are things that are in perfume to make whatever scent stick to your clothes. You know how you spray something in your clothes and just lingers forever, or, you know, you could just smell someone's laundry detergent at the gym. So Sure, it does make things smell better, but it comes at the expense of your endocrine system. So it really destroys your hormones. And a lot of people today are low in testosterone. You know, you're a man, so you can talk about that. Is a lot of men today are are testing testing positive for low testosterone. And they're like, oh, I need to have a, a testosterone level of 800. That's good. But why are you low in testosterone? So I think that's a really important question, which is the second toxin, is uh, things that are from petroleum, they're petroleum based. So they are plastics. Um, they're loaded in personal care products. There's parabens and things, methyl parabens. If you look at your personal care products and shampoos and conditioners and things, you'll see that you'll see parabens in those. And those are endocrine disruptors because they look like estrogen inside of the body. They're called xenoestrogens. So that technically means like an alien. It's an artificial estrogen that looks like estrogen to the body. And so these plastics, these parabens, these phthalates, what they do is they, they lock onto the cell where your own hormones would get in like testosterone or estrogen, because we all have it. And they won't allow your own hormones to get in so that your body will actually have to produce more estrogen and you will become what's called estrogen dominant. This is what I see very commonly on not blood tests, but urine tests where I can actually see someone's hormones and how they're actually producing hormones and whether or not they're clearing the ones that they've even produced. So oftentimes I'll see low testosterone, even for men who are supplementing with it, and they'll have really high estrogen. They're like, well, why is that? And it's oftentimes because they have these chemicals all around them that look just like estrogen to the body. So it's like the plastics, it's the parabens, it's the phthalates. Those are big ones. And those are in your personal care products. That's why, you know, you should never drink plastic water out of a plastic water bottle. Drink out of this. You know, it's, Mm. it's got, you know, stainless steel on the inside, have really healthy, clean drinking water, which is a third one. 
Second, second classification I just listed are, are xenoestrogens, all those things I just listed. The third classification is your drinking water. If you're drinking out of plastic water bottles, you're, first of all, you're drinking plastic, but one third of plastic water bottles today are tap water. They're nothing but tap water. And what we're finding in tap water are things like um, benzodiazepines, birth control, medications that are too small for these large molecular filtration devices. Uh, they're finding lots of heavy metals and heavy metals are terrible because what heavy metals do is just like I was talking about your cells have little doors where each little, you know, mineral or hormone or vitamin or nutrient will get in. But if they're blocked with these toxins, then the good stuff can't get in. So if you have heavy metal toxicity, which is super common, and I'll talk a little bit more about what we're exposed to those is the heavy metals will block the cell wall door where your minerals get in. Minerals are electrolytes. We need them for everything in our life. 98% of hormones are made of minerals. So if you're low testosterone, you're probably zinc deficient, which 80% of the population is. If you're progesterone deficient, which many women are, you're probably zinc deficient. And zinc is also really important for a healthy immune system. And to build healthy skin, hair, nails, like we were talking about your hair, right? Maybe you were a zinc deficient. I don't know. <laughs> Maybe you didn't have to do the whole procedure. If you had enough zinc in your body. And zinc is also really important for a positive mood. So if you are loaded with toxins, no amount of healthy hormone replacement therapy, you could take the best supplements in the world, eat the healthiest diet, but it's not getting into the cells. So other places I could talk about too, we're exposed to heavy metals, but I just wanted to you know, bring it back to yeah. you so that we could comment at however you want to leave me. Yeah. So a uh, few things on that. Uh, thank you for that, for that overview. If I'm hearing you correctly, um, most of the toxins uh, that we're subjected to are, are in our home um, and it comes from the uh, stuff we spray in the home and the, uh, or, or detergents. And it comes on the stuff that we put on our face and our body, like shampoos and conditioners and creams. Yeah, and it comes from the water that we drink. Yep. Um, out of our out of our taps. So, if we clean that up in our home, we've gone a significant amount of the way to to stopping this flood of toxins into our into our uh, into our bodies. Yeah. Um, I uh, it's interesting. I, there's a there's a health practitioner by the name of um, Ben Greenfield from Ben Greenfield Fitness has a great podcast. Um, he's a friend of mine. Been in a mastermind group for a while, and he told me. Back in 2013, I think it was, he said, never put on your body what you wouldn't put in your mouth. Yeah, exactly. And that stuck with me. And so yeah. I all of a sudden started looking at um, these fancy moisturizers that they sell in, in the pharmacies like Neutrogena and L'Oreal shampoos. And, you know, they, they use Jennifer Aniston and Cameron exactly. Diaz and, and all of these Hollywood actresses to promote these products. And then you look on the ingredients and I can't even pronounce half the words. I'm like, what the heck is this? Um, uh, a friend of mine, you may know, may know of him, a guy by the name of Andy Nilo. He, he runs a company called Alatura. And uh, I've been using his uh, moisturizer products now for about, uh, let's say, three or four years. I've been buying it. And uh, when I read the, the back of the label, it's all natural products like honey, honey wax, olive oil, aloe vera, like, um, you know, I'm looking at that going, man, I could put this on my toast. <laughs> you know, yeah, like, exactly. <laughs> I'm like, okay. Your toes uh, and your toast. <laughs> yeah. In fact, if you're listening to this now and you want to check out that brand, um, you can go to jameswanick.com slash skin. Um, and if you just use, if you end up buying the products, I am an affiliate for this product because I've been I've been a, a a buying customer now for three years, and I only ever mention products that I have been a customer of, or rather, I only ever encourage people to buy products that I myself have bought and been a, a regular customer. But if you go to jameswanick.com slash skin and just use the uh, the discount code James at checkout, I think you get twenty percent off. But anyway, worth checking. The ingredients there are all natural. Um, and that was uh, what Ben Greenfield said to me always resonated with me, always stuck with me. Never put on your body what you wouldn't put in your mouth. So I use Dr. Bronner's um, um, uh, shower gel, if you like, which, again, it's like olive oil and, and coconut oil and all that kind of – you're nodding your head, Diane, which means yeah. it's, this is Diane approved, yeah? Yeah. I like okay, the good. almond smell. It smells really good. And it's super cheap. It's like 9 bucks for a huge bottle of it, and it suds up nicely. It's great. 
Yeah. And then in my my home, my partner and I, um, I mean, my partner, she is just absolutely rigid about toxins in, in our yeah. house. So our washing detergent, um, you know, laundry detergent and dishwashing detergent are all natural, natural products, um, no chemicals, no parabens. In fact, we had to, um, she asked me, well, no, she didn't ask me, but she was saying that we didn't, we needed a new fry pan the other day and I thought, well, I'll be a great partner and I'll proactively go to the store and surprise her with a fry pan. Not, not that, you know, she'd be thrilled to get it, but just, I'll just remove her having to, to, to take the time to find it. So I went there and I didn't know which one to get. So I FaceTimed her and I'm in this, this kitchenware store and I said, I'm getting you a fry pan or I'm getting us a fry pan. You know, I thought about this one. What about this one? And she was like, no, she's like, yes, actually screaming. Teflon. Yeah, yeah, because it yes. was like a non-stick. It was promoted yes. as like a non-stick fry pan. And I'm like, what are, you, what are you talking about? She's like, it's full of chemicals and there's non-stick. It needs to be stainless steel. I'm Yay. like, really? Yes, like, like I said, you're drinking water too. Yeah. So uh, that, was, uh, that was something new for me, so I'm always learning. So anyway, now I, I, I purchased a stainless steel frying pan. But isn't it amazing, like all the best advertising and marketing um, – is like, oh, you know, a non-stick fry pan, non-stick so containers. Convenient. And you go, yes, it'd be so easy to clean. But in actual fact, Diane, those products have lots of toxins in them also. Yes? Yes. James, there's a, a documentary you can put in your show notes that is actually, it's disgusting. I mean, you, you, you could really start to see how a lot of these toxins have been allowed to be used for decades, even though they've known that they were causing uh, birth defects and... Uh, mental mental retardation and developmental growth in, in a lot of, of children. And so there's one specifically on nonstick uh, and, and that the whole revolution of convenience, you know, in these pots. So you could watch that one. I can't remember the name of it. I can send it to you, but you watch that one and it, it's an eye opener and it gets you to the point where you really start to ask questions about everything. You stop trusting what's on TV and, and whatever I, I say this all the time, if, if it's advertised on TV, it's probably not good for me because, <laughs> you know, these yeah. people have tons of money. You know, we think about pharmaceuticals and it's like 92% or so of the money that they spend is not on research and development studies. It's on advertising and marketing. And so you start to realize that it's like whoever has the biggest powers and profits are the ones that are getting the most power and profits because they have the most power and profits to begin with. And then they start to monopolize who can talk about things that they, you know, Teflon not necessarily is not something like healthcare industry where natural practitioners like me, we're starting to have our voices cut off because they're starting to monopolize what we're allowed to say and they're silencing and censoring us. So I would really start to question, well, why, what is the point of that? Because they say that science is like the best thing and that they have it all figured out. Well, I'll tell you something else breast implants and Botox. You know, I wrote this book, Killer Breasts here, and I talk about toxins in here. I also have a free ebook that I will share with you for your tribe where I talk about these top 10 toxins and how to clear them, not only from the body, but also how to stop using them and clear them from where you're exposed to them the most. Um, but all these studies like birth, birth control and breast implants and Botox, it's such a deceitful industry where they will do studies on things like this and they'll do it for a short period of time, like maybe three months. And they'll ask, for example, birth control. They'll ask the, the subjects, so can you tell us your journey on, about birth control? Was it successful for you? And they're like, well, how do you define successful? And they say, well, did you have any uh, symptoms? Yes, I had terrible symptoms. I gained 15 pounds. I had terrible periods. I started getting two periods. I got acne. I, my hair started falling out. I lost my sex drive. And they're like, oh, so, but did you get pregnant? And they're like, no. And they said, okay, so you, what you're saying is it was effective. No, because I had a lot of symptoms and it made me feel terrible and I didn't want to use it anymore. They, but then what they do is they, they don't talk about, they're not transparent about the side effects. They call it effective. And then that's the information that they pass on to you. But never mind that women who take birth control are three to four times more likely to commit suicide and be on antidepressants. Same thing for bre breast implants. And so they've, there's so much deceit in studies. So when you see something that says, oh, it's been FDA approved, watch, there's another documentary called The Bleeding Edge where you will see more toxic truths about things like meshes that are inserted into women's vaginas, inserted into uh, and, and around the gastrointestinal tracts of men who have heart issues, and that these devices are actually causing autoimmune reaction to these synthetic things that the body goes, that's not self. 
and will create all kinds of other problems in addition to. So you got to be really careful about the information and where it's sourced from because it's called greenwashing where they're going to say, oh, 100 times percent more better than da 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 whatever. And like someone like you, James, you're like, I don't know. It's good price. It's got a cool label on it. It's right in the front here. So sure. Oh, it's, it's green. It's my favorite color. Great. <laughs> and your wife's like, wait, no, abort mission. <laughs> We're talking to Diane Kayser, and you can learn more uh, at dianekayser.com. And you have a, a book, Diane, called uh, Killer Breasts, which is all about overcoming breast implant illness. Yeah. Uh, and you have a quiz and an ebook. Um, do you want to just tell us where to find more about you just before we continue the conversation? Sure. You just go to my website, dianekayser.com, and on there you can take a quiz to see how toxic you are. So I really wanted you guys all to have a, a framework of, sure, you're talking about toxins, but what does it mean for me? So I have a whole neurotoxic quiz to understand how toxins impact your brain, your neurophysiology, which is your whole body, how your brain affects your hormones, your, your gut, because it all starts here in the brain and how toxic that you are. So there's a quiz on there. You can, And then from there, I'll give you my uh, top 10 toxins ebook where you can learn a lot more about the statistics, how we got where we are, how to fix it, how to resolve it, my protocol that's individualized for you based on your toxic load. And then you could also get the book there as well, as well as I, I just created a whole, you know, supplement line, supplement line to help people clear toxins from their body. So they're not taking low dose things that really aren't moving the needle for them. Got a question, Diane. I was, yeah. uh, I was told recently that the the place where the most toxins live or the place in your home where you are subjected to the most toxins is actually in your shower when you're mm -hmm. having a hot shower mm -hmm. and the, not a cold shower, but a hot shower. And the argument was, is that your pores open up when your body is warm yep. and that the water that is coming through the shower faucet and going on to your body is filled with these toxins that we know our drinking water has. And so we're literally pouring toxins all over our body. Is that your understanding? Is that exaggerated? Is that understated? Like what's your understanding on that? I like how you position the question. When people hear us talk about toxins, they think, oh, you know, everything in moderation. And this is, this is actually probably an understatement. Because what does happen in hot showers is your pores open. And so whatever products that you're using on your skin have a way into your bloodstream straight through that expanded highway. So as you're talking about, don't put anything on your skin that you wouldn't eat. It's so true. Um, you know, there's a lot of silicon based products too that women are using in their hair to make it, you know, easier to brush or um, more manageable or they, they label say it thickens your hair or um, it gives your hair volume or whatever. The majority of these products are super toxic. So first of all, you have a heat environment and your pores do expand. Yes. And second of all, if you don't have a proper shower filter, which, you know, the Brita's and the peers of the world, these aren't cutting it like a $40 water filter, not cutting it. Um, a whole house water filter is something I absolutely recommend today because you could, the things our water system, our, our water jurisdiction, as an example in America, there's only one person regulating the entire plastic water bottle industry. So it gives you an idea of the level of negligence and lack of care that they have for the, the amount of toxins that are in our water supply, our food supply, et cetera. So today, if you want to know the top three things that are going to block your pineal gland, which is your ability to use your intuition instead of just listening to rock stars like James and myself, how to listen to yourself and to learn how to just feel out what feels like BS when you're reading it or not. Like you could just feel when someone just says feel right, you know, but you will not be able to use this if you have these three things around you in high levels. And that's glyphosate, which is in Roundup, which is in our water supply, our streams. Um, they use it in, in livestock and you know, terrible animal farms. And it's used a lot in, um, in farming. So like 90 something percent of our crops to today in America not so much Australia, but you guys are following suit. Our genetically modified organisms are seven, seven crops, monocrops that are, are consumed today. And that's not good for our health either. So we have glyphosate. We also have fluoride. That's the second one that, that blocks and, and calcifies your pineal gland. And then you have electronic magnetic frequencies and radiation. That's smart technology that's sleeping close to uh, electronic devices or under or close to a Wi-Fi device. What's happening with 5G 
smart technology of all kinds. We just got wavelengths like this passing all over our body and our bodies are electric. So those three things can calcify your pineal gland. What I'm saying about water is that when you have glyphosate and you have fluoride being two of the top three things that calcify your pineal gland and block your intuition and hence your ability to, for your body to communicate down to your endocrine glands, to make optimal levels of hormones, to protect your gut and create a healthy immunity or a healthy baby or whatever it is you're looking to create. Those things are now what's going into your bloodstream if it's not filtered out of your water supply. So those two things have a way in through your expanded pores in the shower. And within less than a minute, depending on if you're in a hot shower or not, 60 to 80% of what you apply to your skin gets directly into the bloodstream. And now it's just like eating food. It has to go through your bloodstream to your liver for processing. And it has to either leave your body through exhalation and breath or through, you know, pooping or peeing or, swe- or sweating. Those are the top four eliminatory pathways. So now we have most people who are constipated and you're not going to, it's hard to get those things out of your system because most people aren't pooping two or three times a day as we're supposed to. And most people are not properly breathing, especially now with masks on that's 70% of your, de- your detox comes through your exhale. People aren't talking about that very much today. And then people think that most of our detox happens through our skin but it's actually breath, then skin, then bowels, then urination. So whatever you're showering with, and if it's toxins, toxic soaps, and you're taking a loofah, which is another insult to injury, you're taking a loofah and you're, you're now you're brushing and opening even more. You're tearing your skin cells and all these toxins are getting in. So you can actually go into um, environmentalworkinggroup.org, ewg.org, and you can score all of these personal care products that you're using in your shower And if it's not a zero to three, it's not good for me. Throw it away. (laughs) That's another one. So you could actually score your personal care products and understand what things are toxic for you so that when you are at the most, especially bathtub too, James, if you're taking a bath, you got bubble baths in there, you got these really toxic artificial scents that in, you know, bath salts, those things are also going into your vagina and on your private parts. And we're wondering why we're infertile. One in five couples can't get pregnant anymore. It's because we got all these toxins that are going directly into the bloodstream through the skin. Yes. In showers and bathtubs. Yeah. It's pretty frightening when you get into it, isn't it? Um, That was interesting about the breath. Um, You said 70% of releasing toxins or getting rid of toxins is through the breath. Is that right? Mm -hmm. Yep. And what, how does it, how does it scale down from there? So it's about 70% through the breath. And then it's about, it's about 15% through your sweating and then the remaining yep. portion, like 15%, is through fecal matter and through urination. Got it. Okay. So just a couple things on that. Um, it's funny because the best I've ever felt, uh, if I'm not doing like a form of physical exercise, is after I've done a, hol- a holotropic breathing. Yes. So when I've gone, when I was living in Venice Beach, California, before COVID-19, I would go to a place called Sanctum. Uh, in Venice, and I would go and do this holotropic breathing um, class where for about 25, 30 minutes, you'd breathe very deeply, you're holding a breath. It's guided, of course, and a lot of people, you know, have, have different reactions, but some people cry during it. Other people kind of start to shake. Other people are just, you know, feel like they've, they've hit euphoria. Other people don't seem to feel anything, but then afterwards they feel something. And, and I, I can certainly say that, um, In the moments and hours after I've done one of those guided holotropic breathing sessions, I feel terrific, like just wonderful. So um, I don't know if that's really because I'm releasing toxins or whether it's just because I've got the the heart rate going, but maybe it's because I'm I'm, I'm purging a lot of the toxins that have been stored in my my body, Diane. Yeah. Yeah, especially now with people with our lungs. Our lungs are going to need a lot of cleansing. And, and I've recently also started doing swimming in the, in the pool. So I want to ask you about this question because I've been finding the swimming has been fantastic because of the breath. So I, it's kind of, I find it quite meditative. I'm doing laps. I've got my earplugs in. I've got my goggles on and I'm, I'm doing these laps. And just the act of breathing as a con- as consistently for about 30 minutes in the pool feels fantastic. Having said that, now I'm thinking, well, hang on. Well, what about all the chlorine in the pool? Is that, yes. How is the chlorine in the pool affecting me? Yeah, that's an, that is a really tough one, James, because hot tubs are so nice and swimming is so good for you. Um, you got to move to a coastal city again and swim in the ocean. (laughs) Chlorine, unfortunately, chlorine is an, is an antibiotic. You know, it does what it 
does to the body that it does for pools. And so a lot of these cleaning agents, of course, when you're in the pool, it's not as diff- it's not as bad when it's cold water, obviously, when you're swimming in the pool as it is if you're in a hot tub. But it is cause for a lot, it kills a lot of our microbes. So it kills a lot of the microbes on your skin. And your skin needs a probiotics. In fact, the, 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 a big danger, a huge toxin right now is all of this hand antibacterial soaps and sprays because it's got alcohol and then it's got antibiotics on it that kill, but it kills bad bugs and good bugs. Same thing yeah. with fluorine is it kills, this is your first line of defense, you guys, it's right here on your skin. Yeah. You know, yeah. and, and so when you're killing a lot of these good guys, good girls and bad guys and bad girls, you're throwing the baby out with the bathwater, which I hate that statement because I don't like to throw babies. I don't know about you, James. It, <laughs> it's not, that's kind of abusive, but it, it's, it's, and it's, let's not say killing two birds with one stone. I don't like all those phrases. It's so violent, but we're, there is a way that you can use hand soaps and bacterial soaps without killing the good stuff too. And so- yeah. That's why if you can find a saltwater pool or something uh, that's non-chlorinated, it's much better. It's actually hydrating you because you, you're swimming in, in a saltwater pool and it's mimicking being in the ocean. So, you know, where we're at today in today's world is, yes, yeah, swimming is good. It's really good for you, but you've got something else that you're going to know that is not as good for you. So you can get, there's today that you can get lotions where you can apply back uh, probiotics to the skin to add back life to it. Um, so mm-hmm. it's one of those things where, yeah, it's not the best for you, but neither is breathing a lot of the smoke from the wildfires in California either. So we just got to do what we can do. Just a couple of things just before we wrap up here, Diane. Um, as you mentioned, I help people quit drinking. Um, yeah. Uh, alcohol is filled with toxins, are absolutely jam-packed. And the two drinks that have the most toxins, actually, what I'll, I'll why don't you have a guess? We'll play a little game, Diane. Can you yeah. guess which which two particular drinks have the most toxins in them. And if you don't know, it's great. No, no problem. Just take a guess. Yeah. I'll, I'll just guess based on my own experience is, um, what's the whiskey. That's the hot one. That's, uh, what it's called. The hot, hot whiskey. whiskey? It's, it tastes like cinnamon. I don't know. I haven't oh. drunk in 10 and a half years, so I'm out of, I'm out of the loop. <laughs> yeah. Th- this one is, uh, God, I can't remember the name of it. It's got a little devil on it. That should tell you something. If you look at a lot of these spirits, it's like, oh, the spirits, they're evil spirits. They've got horns and devils. I'm like, God, the, the label he gives looks terrible. Um, but it's that, it's that hot whiskey and it's got propylene glycol on it. I took a shot of it like five years ago. My whole body broke out in hives. Propylene glycol, that is uh, something that they use to defreeze, defreeze and uh, uses antifreeze on airplanes. So that's okay. that'd be my first guess. And so then hot whiskey, hot whiskey is your first guess. First guess. And what's the next one? Um, maybe something like a, like a Mike's hard that's loaded with sugar and artificial flavors and stuff. Maybe Mike's hard. Did you say? Yeah. Mike's hard lemonade. Oh man, this is so fascinating. Let's have a look. I'm just looking on Google here. Mike's hard lemonade Yeah, me too. Uh, is a flavored malt beverage supplier. Okay. Okay. Cool. Fire, Fireball is the name of the first one. Couple of good guesses. So you want to know the actual, the actual truth? I'd Which love to drinks know. have the most toxins? Yeah. Red wine and beer. Oh, two of the most common pesticides. Red wine, pesticides. red wine, and beer have the most toxins in them. Absolutely, or almost on a, on, a, on a level killing. In fact, so close that I just call it level. Red yeah. wine and beer. Um, in actual fact, the 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 liquor or the alcohol that has the least toxins are some of those clearer spirits like um, tequila. Yep. Uh, even vodka, because there's less toxins in in those ones. Now, this is not an invitation for everyone to go out and get smashed on tequila and vodka, but just so you know, like you know, beer and red wine, worst. You know, even though all of these ridiculous studies that come out that say, "Oh, a glass of red wine a day is good for your heart." I mean, that has been debunked now so many times. Um, so there's that. Um, and again, don't trust what I say. Do your own research. Google it, you know, and 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 investigate. Not just Google it and look at stories that are published in CNN or dot com or whatever that say, "Oh, a glass of wine is good for your health." I mean, look at real independent studies. I was having this conversation with my partner the other day. It's like a lot of people's argument about science is, "Oh, I trust science," and I go, "Okay, that's gr- that, that's great. Trust science, but then you have to really trust where the science is coming from, right? Because I'm a believer in, I believe in science, but who's funding the science? 
that's the that's the that's the bigger question i think because you you could just you know say oh i will trust every single last thing that the world health organization for example tells me because it's the world health organization or you could actually go back and go well who funds the you know are they a truly independent organization? Now, I don't know. I'm doing my own research on that, and I don't want to just pick on the, the World Health Organization. But you could be, it could be any, any privately funded um, institution that puts out the results of a study. You have to follow the money. Like you got, there's a money trail because people, whether they like it or not, or whether it's direct or indirect, are influenced by big money by in, are influenced by funding by are influenced by donors and so the results of science or that the science results may seem independent but in actual fact that upon further inspection they could be um influenced um independent <laughs> i don't know if that's a that's a phrase but you know what i think you know what i mean Diane. i can see you yeah. nodding yeah I mean, the, the whole term influencers all over social media, you have people recommending, you know, these alcoholic beverages that have B vitamins in them. So it makes them so much better because it's replenishing the vitamins that you're deficient in from drinking the various said things. But these B vitamins are synthetic and they get paid a lot of money to hold these things like, oh, no hangover. And I just can't dig it, man. I've been approached by many of these companies to be an influencer for these beverage companies and they're like, but they have B vitamins in it. I'm like, yeah, great. But do you know what alcohol does? And any kind of alcohol, no matter what it is, is it raises your triglycerides in your liver and it raises your liver enzymes. And you know what? If you're not a liver, you're a dyer. And if your liver is not in tip top shape, then none of you is. And you're not going to lose weight. And you're not going to sleep well. And you're not going to get, you know, have a healthy sex life and you're not going to have the look that you want. So it's, it's amazing how many women are brainwashed into the same thing that I work with that come to me and they're like, I drink two, two glasses of wine a night and I won't quit. What do, what do I have to do to lose weight? I'm like, whoa, we have a problem here. What are you, it's beyond just the alcohol. What story or belief or thought are you so afraid to face that you need to numb out with alcohol? So it's not even, I would say that alcohol is not even the root problem. The root problem is what are you numbing out such that you don't like who you are that you need to, to become someone else to love who you are and to fit in. That's really, cause the only way I was able to stop drinking was to love who I was. So I wasn't so awkward, you know, in social settings that I thought I, need, I needed it to become someone else to be loved. Just a, a follow up on something you said there as well. Um, what came to mind was uh, orange juice, bottles of orange juice always gets promoted as being a great source of vitamin C. Yeah. And then you look on the label on the back and you see it's like 50 grams of sugar per glass. And it's concentrate. <laughs> oh, and it's concentrated. And it's, I mean, I remember see, I remember walking through a Whole Foods five, four or five years ago and there was a, a, a greens juice. I can't remember the brand, but it was a greens juice and it was promoting all the vitamin, vitamin C, vitamin, blah, blah, blah. It was like, and I looked on the back and it was 52 grams of sugar. Mm-hmm. 52 grams of sugar yet if you if you saw the beautiful array of tropical fruits on the the front packaging and all of the vitamin c stuff you would get you would believe that drinking this was actually good for you yeah like that's the greenwashing it, it, yeah yeah that's the brainwashing so anyway if anything yeah. i hope yeah. i hope that this has opened your eyes and ears to maybe at least question um, and I'm not speaking to you, Diane, I'm speaking to our yeah. listener here, to invite you to, uh, uh, I think Diane and I are wanting to invite you to just start questioning everything. Yes. Um, you know, take a look in your bathroom right now and, and what are the products that you're putting on your body and question them, should you? Mm-hmm. Take Diane's quiz. Where's the, what's the URL that, where they can um, take that quiz, Diane, they can see how toxic their, their um, home is. Yeah. Well, you go to my website in the very top, it'll say, take the neurotoxic quiz. It's diancage.com forward slash neuro dash quiz. And so when you do that, it'll come up with if you're low, medium or high. And I talk about those top 10 toxins, which we don't even have time for today, but another big source of it is in your mouth. And those are things that, you know, the average dentist today, according to the ADA, you know, mercury is still not a big deal. And mercury is one of the nastiest, gnarliest toxins in the world. And if you've had them as a kid and had them removed, but never had the, the mercury cleanse from your body, you probably still have it. Mold, another issue. I mean, these things are everywhere and they're super invasive, but it doesn't have to be overwhelming. So that's the quiz that I want you guys to take in the ebook that you could download so that you can see the real truth behind it. 
This took me 10 years to compile all that information into one small ebook. So it will blow your mind. Diane, thank you so much for your time. And just before we go, I see yeah. that you are, uh, I see that you're rocking a pair of Swannies blue light blocking glasses. Tell us about them. I am. I love these things. I, of course, I recommend them to all of my clients. And this is one of the things that I don't leave home without. Um, I also have the lower ones. So for during the daytime, um, I remember when I first met you, James, you, I was like, Oh my God, you're one of my heroes. You look familiar. I don't know why, but, and then you're like, Oh, I'm the Swannies guy. And you gave me a pair and these are the ones. So, um, I, always wear them when I'm working after sun goes down six o'clock, seven o'clock at night. And being that I do a lot of reports for my clients labs. And again, blood testing is not a very good source to check your hormones. It's important to do urinary testing as well. When I do them, I see chronically on my clients cases and their hormone results, because I'm a functional medicine practitioner, their melatonin is super low. That's your sleep hormone. And one of the main reasons why your melatonin is super low is because you're looking at blue light throughout the day, which looks just like the sun. And, and James talks about this so much. So when I start having my clients wear these at night, they notice that they're sleeping deeper. And if you're sleeping deeper, then everything's better. So I wear these during the day when I've got my other ones that I just got from that you guys just sent me, which is awesome. But definitely, I always tell my clients, do not look at the TV. And it's so, it's so true. I, when you have, when you're super toxic, you're also light sensitive and I'm very light sensitive. So I have to wear these because of years of beauty toxins. You're saying you're changing lives and saving lives with these James big time because melatonin levels go up when people do wear these melatonin does take to help it, but why not ask the question of what's blocking melatonin? And so these blue blockers are the supporters that do block melatonin production. So thanks for what you do. You're so welcome. And thank you for your kind words about that. I appreciate it. Yeah, for sure. Diane, so lovely to catch up with you and thank you for giving us your words of wisdom and your guidance uh, on today's call. So appreciate you. If, to the listener, please go to uh, dianekazer.com, D-I-A-N-E-K-A-Z-E-R, and there's some links down below as well um, where you are listening or listening to this episode or watching it. Diane, thanks again. Thanks, James, for having me. Super fun. Thanks for listening to the Alcohol-Free Lifestyle Podcast. I want to load you up with some free stuff right now. So if you want to go to jameswanick.com slash guide, I will send you my Quit Alcohol Guide, which has helped six-figure entrepreneurs and top professionals reduce or quit drinking. You can also text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 if you're in the US, of course. It doesn't really work anywhere outside of the US. But if you're in the US on your mobile phone and you'd like that guide, text the word Quit Guide to the number 44222 or you can go to jameswanick.com slash guide. If you'd like to schedule a free 15-minute call with one of my top coaches, just an exploratory call to see if or how we can help you, then you can go to jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90 to the number 44222 if you're listening in the US on a mobile phone. That's jameswanick.com slash schedule, or you can text the word project90, that's one word, project90, to the number 44222. Feel free to send me a direct message over on my Instagram account, which is at James Swanick. You can also watch video episodes of this podcast and a series of other educational videos on my YouTube channel, which is James Swanick One, or you can direct message me on Facebook at James Swanick Official. And finally, a request. Would you please now write a short review of the podcast inside of the Apple Podcast app on your phone or on iTunes on your desktop? computer. Would you please give the show five stars and write a quick one or two sentence review? This will help the show get in front of even more listeners, potentially transforming someone's life. You can rate and review the show inside of your Apple podcast app on your phone or over on iTunes on your desktop. Thank you so much and I'll catch you next time.